Well, this brings us to the last keynote for the day on the implementation of information security and its effect in the port sector by Mr. I Ashley uh, Popia, IT security specialist, Mauritius Ports Authority. Now, what a thought-provoking speech topic this is. All the best, Ashley. The stage is all yours for the next 15 minutes. Over to you. Hello. We can hear you. Okay, um, so by the time my screen come up, can all of you see? Yes, we can. We can see your screen. Oh, wow. Excellent. So thank you my so pleasure. much, everybody. So um, uh, should I say good afternoon or good morning to all of you sitting anywhere in the corner of the world? So welcome. And thank you to Extra Even to, you know, to give me this opportunity to be a keynote speaker and to speak on the implementation of information security and its effect in the port sector. Um, yes, so let, because see, I, I think I have a, um, a very, um, I would say, um, heavy task because I'm the last speaker. I don't want you to sleep, guys. So let's move quickly. So information security. I think, you know, by, by, by today or by the end of this session, I think you've seen it everywhere. You know what it is all about. But it's important at least to reiterate because I will take it from what Isaka told us what is information security. So information security, the protection of information, whether in electronic or physical, very important. We can't just say, you know, information is just what we have on computers. No, 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 no. It's not that. So it's also what we, <clears throat> we see in terms of hard also. This is very, very important. What sometimes we might, you know, we might think that, no, it's not, it's not important, but it is, guys. So let us come now to information security in the port, diving directly into this very important subject. So as you, you, I would like to go a bit on the history of information security in the port started becoming important after, I think everybody would agree that, you know, after the terrorist attack in the world, in the, uh, on the World Trade Center and in Pentagon. You know, this is where the question of information security started, you know, to, to, to be, you know, in our mind and thinking properly, you know, how did this happen? So this was a very, very um, um, damaging situation in, in the US and everywhere in the world, things started changing. So let us put us a question, guys. I don't know if you will be able to answer. In French, we say, Question pour un champion. So, do you think information security is uh, in the port is different from any industry? I don't know if I can get some guys answering this question. Jamil, if you are around, I'll be more than happy to hear from you. <laughs> anyway, I think this is a, a very, you know, uh, important point to see, right? Uh, a very important answer at the same time. I think the answer is very no. Right, so it's uh, it's not different, no different at all. Information security is information security. You like it or not. Uh, here, I would like to add something. There is something which uh, our colleague uh, spoke about. I think her name was uh, Faith uh, Wawira. Uh, she spoke about operational technologies. This is also in there, but I haven't, you know, um, included in my presentation. Uh, for the simple reason, you know, I don't want to take much of your time, but knowing that operational technologies also is a very important point, you know, uh, aspect nowadays in, in many ports around the world, because automation is there, um, you, you have uh, a, a connected devices and so on, all these devices are connected to the internet, which was not the case before. So therefore, there is a big risk. So as, you, as I mentioned, or oh, information security is so so important in in a port, especially you know where 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 we're talking here in in uh, in the context of uh, of Africa, especially and in Mauritius. Uh, Mauritius being, we have only one port, so we have we are doing our best to secure the only you know important infrastructure that we have here. So I don't think it's only happening in Mauritius around the world. Everybody or every CEOs, every information security administrator or CISO make sure that, you know, their data 
are very, very, very secure. Because just imagine if it is not what can happen to this country. Let us see now a few facts, you know, um, what research has done, you know, what research has been saying about all this. This is a new research which I've just done uh, in a research paper from Science Direct. And as you would see, it's very, very clear, you know, it, it's all the firms which you can see on your left hand side, you know, and the type of, of, of uh, operators they are and the types of attacks which happen and the year and the source, you know, and all this is very, very clearly mentioned in, in this table. And I don't think, you know, uh, when you look at this, just see these, this type of attack, which you can see, guys, you can, it's, it's cyber, um, cyber, cyber attack. You see malware, hacktivism, et cetera, et cetera. It's very, um, so it, it's, it's in a way saying that this is really happening in the world. It's not something which I'm just talking out of nothing. Just see that, you know, I've, I've just been around the world and seeing, you know, what is there, what, what is really happening. So I've been in Thailand and there is a statistic saying that, well, I've got the data till uh, 2019 saying that, you know, just see the type of attack which has been happening in, in the cyber security, uh, cyber incident which has happened in the port of Thailand. And this is very, very, according to me, very, very scary. And it is not something that we have to joke around. So we have to be very serious when it comes to cybersecurity in the port. So um, now let's let's see let's see that let's see see something which is again very important, which is which I would like to talk about, which is the implementation of information security in the port. So after seeing all these attacks, we've just I've just men I've just seen, and all all the different data we've just seen. So how do we counter the threats, you know, mentioned above? The first one, which, which according to me is very important, and I'm sure all, all, the, all the viewers seeing this presentation, they would agree. And I'm, I'm thinking it's not new to anyone. Measures and policies are very important. Here I'm talking about ISO, um, ISO 107001, COVID, NIST, and we have so many frameworks which can put in place. So these are, as I said, you know, referring, I'm referring to basically internal procedures of the port, which you guys can put in place to just, you know, to have um, um, at least, I would say, a very good level of, of, in, of, of protection in your environment. The next one is we can use what we call a cyber risk um, management as proposed by the IMO. So in the port, you, I, I think, uh, I don't know if we have an audience where uh, we know what is IMO. IMO is, and as uh, the name here mentioned, the full form is International Maritime Organization. So this is um, an organization under the UN, which looks after all what is, you know, um, um, the maritime aspect. So they have already proposed something, which is a cyber risk management. So those who are in the port can already use it. The next one is, that we have to do. I don't think, um, here I would like to just make a parenthesis. I think everybody would agree on this platform. There is no system which is 100% secure. You can have the best tool. Jamil, don't get me wrong if you're listening to me and others you know, who are you know, vendor oriented. Um, I don't think you know, it's 100% secure, but you have always a small element if you're staff are not well trained and this is where my point my third point comes in and where i say improvement of knowledge and competency of your staff it's very important constant training and the last one is awareness everybody in your organization must be must be i'm repeating because um only machine only tools won't do the job it is next to impossible so you need, you need to drive your people around. You need to make them understand, guys, this is not how it works. A very simple example. A simple phishing can, can put your whole organization down. Very simple. It, it is so easy. And so many people fall in this trap, right? Even, even you know, when I do consultancy, I do get this a lot. I'm sure everybody won't say no to what I'm saying. Now let me come to a next point 
which is um, which is according to me um, very very important um, from a security perspective again, which is the physical security. From what I have been talking before, it was all about logical security. Now it's important also at the same time to talk about the physical security of a port. So physical security, of course, you will have access control, which I've not mentioned here, which you can which you can already put in place having your um, uh, your RFID tag, which can be put at all entry of the port to enter, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But at the same time, the the IMO has put something um, that we call um, the ISPS code. So um, the ISPS code is something. It's 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 in fact a framework which uh, which uh, which the IMO uh, has put in place, and this is under SOLAS convention. You know, so this this um, these frameworks talks a lot on on the security, physical security aspect of that. So we cannot, as I said in my first point, as you see, as, as you see on the slide, as I said, you know, you can't rely, can you really rely on the information security framework? No, you can't because it's very limited somehow. So you need the ISPS code because see the maritime sector is so different from the other sectors, but still information security would would form part of it, but the layer of physical security is another dimension. This is where the IMO comes into picture, and and these guys has proposed that all the port must adopt what we call the ISPS code, which is something extremely important. I will not dwell too much in this topic, you know, because this is uh, I would say very much more physical and where you have uh, a human being intervention and how things should be in the port, what type of fencing should be there, et cetera, et cetera, right? So um, by having all this, this would prevent what we call malicious um, outsiders from passing into the port and accessing the secret information. And I think everybody would agree, a port contains a lot of secret information, top, top information, top secret information. For instance, I think you uh, all of you know um, it's not a secret <laughs> anymore. Many people who, you know, who brings in drugs, you know, uh, take the maritime routes. So some information come to us that are top level, uh, top secret information, which no one should gain access to it. So, so physical access uh, to the port is very, very, very important. Moving to the next one now. Um, I'll be speaking, you know, on on what we call the effect uh, of the adoption of information uh, information security in the port. So, what will be the effect? In fact, you know, when we when we when we adopt this, what will happen to the port? So, first of all, you know, so first advantage we will get, you know, protection of our data and information, right? So, we will have this confidence that the data is there and i'm sure this uh, all of you would agree on what i'm saying next point pr protects network and resources our network somehow will be protected from you know uh, from people who are mal intended we have another one allow employees of course to work safely in in the place of work next one i think this is uh, according to me very important protection, the goodwill of the company, of the port, and the country at the same time. So this is a very important point. If something happened to the port, especially if it's a government-owned port, you know, um, it is blown to all dimensions. Even if it's a private port, it is even much, much complicated uh, to that, you know. So um, we have to be very, very careful. You know, as I said in my previous intervention, as a panelist, you know, I said that goodwill is something which has to be preserved at all costs. If we don't do that, it is a big problem because stakeholders will get affected. Its damage is too, too, too far complicated. So um, the next point or the next slide, I think it's the last one from my side is, you know, however you can see, you know, on the contrary, implementation of information security 
could imply high cost of implementation. Yes, it costs a lot of money. Because see, when you are deploying, for instance, ISO 27001, you have a lot of resources which are, you know, which is needed to be able to deploy it 100%. Next one, you have res resistance to change. And this is where you need a very good change management adoption. You need to have very good people around you to do that because people are resistant to change. You like it or not, they would not like to move on. They would like to be in their comfort zone. And this is something which, you know, sometimes can put your information security deployment to a hole or to at stake. You know, this will, these people would not follow if you don't, you know, if you don't do a proper change management. And I have experienced it many where many many places where you know i have been doing consultancy projects and the next one is it is time consuming here you would see you know i have put the what we call the public sector indeed you know especially in public sector it's not easy because you have a lot of um um uh, people from uh, what we call the um i'm not getting the right word um anyway so, but but these these public sector people, you know, it's not something which is very very easy to to do to do the task. You know, it is time consuming, and they will take their own leisure time to implement it. So you need to have the buy-in of a top management. The top management has to be on you, with you, you know, for this project to be implemented. Because why? The first point is, you know, you need you need funding for that, right? And having a top management support. You know, will will ensure that all the all the um, all the supporting department will have to follow in what the top management is saying to do. Is saying you guys to do, but they have to do it by means by crook or by hook or by crook. So this is the end of my presentation. As I said, I would not be so long, and as you would see below all my details, and you know, if you have any questions. I've tried to put it short because I know I was the last presenter and I, I, I have kept it as small as possible, short but sweet. I've tried to pass on the information. So if you have any question, Roger, I'll be more than happy to take it. Um, and I would like to thank you so much for giving me this so opportunity. Far, so far, no questions, Ashley, but in case we do have any questions, we will go ahead and you know shoot them to you, right? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. You can stop sharing, Ashley. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So, uh, thank you, Ashley, for the extremely insightful keynote. And uh, thank you very much for taking the time out uh, and attending this uh, summit and sharing with us your knowledge. Thank you very much. Thank you.